Hello, this is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes. And I've missed you for many months with the pandemic. And I found this one. And it seems to have a fair amount of um, stone in it. Now, this could all be folk, faux stuff. It might not be good. But this looks down here in the red section. Could be coral. Could be faux coral. Um, this looks like sodalite. It looks like uh, these look like fresh water, uh, not fresh water, like a, a, a semi-precious stone. There's some purple. This looks like sponge coral. There's another thing that looks like coral. There is this sort of butterscotch amber type necklace with a, um, a barrel clasp built in, which is probably a vintage necklace. Um, some interesting carved beads. So, um, I felt it was worth uh, spending a little bit of money, and uh, I'll just uh, take off the top. It was uh, $19.99 less the senior's discount, which is 10%. The jar, I've put it, uh, well, it's not kind of the way it's supposed to go, but put it on its side so we can sort of take one thing out at a time. So the first piece in the top of the jar has a, a hook and ring clasp. Uh, Faux pearls in good condition um, on string, not knotted in between, and it's got this large, I think it's ceramic. Yeah, it, it feels rough at the bottom there. A, a, a large ceramic focal. So a dramatic piece. This focal would be really nice repurposed into a wind chime. Um, yeah, even some of these beads, you can just see, so see it, um, this part, making the sound as it bangs against the wind chime. So, hey, purpose for that. Put it off to the side. Ooh, something made out of fiber. I'm not really sure. Well, this is a big thing. Alrighty. I'm going to put that back a little bit further. So, this is uh, sort of a Tibetan style piece, you might say. Um, some little paddles. This is hollow metal. And these are, feels like ceramic, I would say plastic, some little leather spacers. Um, sort of a painted metal bead. Interesting. So I don't like the um, the rope on it, but there's quite a few uh, very nice pieces in there that uh, could be repurposed. And even, I mean, just the necklace from this point of view. Really nice boho kind of summery look. I'm going to take this big thing out of the back because I don't think you can see it as well as I would like. And let's try it again. So, here's this. Uh, there we go. Now you can see it's true glory. Sorry for the shadows. Um, heavy pieces in here. This is interesting. A hands hand with, uh, I think that's a piece of glass. I mean, made to look like it would be... Um, a stone like it's all rough but it yeah sounds like glass when you when you bang it against glass um probably uh i mean i'd say a fair trade piece simply because by the type of clasp and chain it has it's a very heavy hand um chain it you know could use a little cleaning no marks, rough. Again, I would probably repurpose this into a wind chime. I have wind chimes on the brain today. So I hope everybody's doing well, that you're surviving so far. Uh, life has been a challenge. So these beads are cold. Yes. So these, I, can, I should know the name of them. I really should. I thought I recognized them um, in the jar. And right now the name totally escapes me. So if I figure out what kind of stone they are 
or even if they are a type of coral, but I'm pretty sure they are a stone. Um, nice long uh, necklace. And the stones are a good size for repurposing. So I'm very happy with that. The, the I don't like jewelry jars that have things like Mardi Gras beads and 10 watches and 15 um, bangles or bracelets. So I figured this was worth, worth my while. Now, these really do look like sodalite. They're just on a plastic cord, but they certainly look like uh, sodalite that's been slightly polished, sodalite chips. And uh, I have, uh, I'll do a little more experimentation. I suppose they could be, you know, rocks that have been dyed. I could try a, a Q-tip and acetone test. I won't do it right now. Um, but I can report back to you as to whether uh, these are dyed or not and um, go from there. But perfect. Um, second set of... Uh, nice stone beads. These I thought might be amethyst. They're but I think they're just glass. Hear my Canadian accent there? That's my southern Ontario accent. My grandparents on my dad's side were from, well, one family was from England. My grandfather was two years old when they, uh, we're going to bring bring the Titanic to North America, and they uh, they got kicked off the boat for somebody who could pay a bit more. So uh, he arrived later and didn't have to uh, deal with being on the Titanic. So we have this funny accent. My grandfather always talked about palm trees, and they lived near a small town called Palmerston, and they spelled P-A-L-M as in palm trees or Palmerston, but for where we come from, that's our Southern Ontario accent, Pam and Palmerston, and the weather is calm today, um, if you wonder what's going on. So these, I'm pretty sure are glass, um, I don't know what they sound like, well, do I have a better glass container I can bang them with? Yeah, I don't know, they... They're, I think they're glass because they're warming up as I hold them. But those would be interesting in jewelry, like interesting spacers. And here's some more of these, the ones that I should know the name of and can't remember. Now, I did buy a couple jewelry jars about four months ago when stores were open. And they contained jewelry supplies. And I thought, oh, great, I go make some jewelry with them. And after I got everything all sorted out, I thought, oh, gee, it would have been fun to make a, a jewelry video. And I didn't. And there were tons and tons of uh, Bally-style beads and findings. And I've made a lot of jewelry with them. So maybe I'll do a jewelry video. So a second one of these uh, sort of orange and cream stone beads. Yay! Um, some shiny stuff. Oh, there's a couple of these. Are they the same? Not quite. Okay. Hey, non-metallic hemolite. Hemolite. Hematite. Or hematite. Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. I guess it depends where you come from, how you pronounce things. So this is uh, chips. Of hematite, non-magnetic, yay, I hate the magnetic stuff. It might be um, real hematite that's been magnetized because they can magnetize it um, using magnets and heat. Um, and I have a project where I want to take some and try to demagnetize them. But also there's a product out there called Hemolike or Hemolike that's not anything, like it's not made from the iron ore. <laughs> um, and they tend to magnetize it. And sure, magnetic properties have, have some um, helpful health benefits, but in a jewelry jar, magnetic jewelry just causes all kinds of tangles. So, some hematite. 
and this. Now, hmm, let's get the old glass jar here. Yeah, this sounds like glass. See, I think the difference It's very, this is a little heavier sound. Um, how about this, the soda light? Lower, higher. Pretty sure that this is glass. Otherwise, you would have to polish all these little chips. And I tend in my, to find in my jewelry stuff more glass looks like this it's also not it doesn't keep the coldness this is still cold like it's still cold when I press it against my skin or this is uh, warming up being under the light so glass chips but hey I'm glad that there's a lot more uh, jewelry making pieces in here than I thought now this this is interesting it's not it's not cold it's very light It doesn't even feel like glass, though. Um, I'll have to explore that. But there's lots of jewelry it could be used in. Oh, well, got some little strange beads. Lots of little bits of yucky stuff coming out of here. This again, a uh, probably a you know a fair trade tourist piece. These look like dyed discs you can I don't know I don't have a I don't know what they're stone of some sort um, cold but I don't know what kind of stone and you can kind of see on that one that's pretty obvious that that was white underneath and then I don't really want to scrape it off but I will report back if this is uh, some kind of uh, dyed stone. It's got some interesting striations and colorations and shapes. Hello! Uh, my camera cut out on me. So here we are back. Here's Mr. Owl that we just about uh, had finished off on. Let me focus better. Okay, so nice articulated owl. Um, uh, you know, just inexpensive metal. I, I would worry if I uh, touched it with a soldering iron it might just melt. It's that sort of lightweight, I don't know what you call that metal, but you know, white metal, cheap metal. <laughs> I don't have a correct term for it, um, but a very nice owl necklace. Um, in great shape, you know. I don't think it needs to be shined up. I think that's just the style of it. And then there is this huge, long, prickly piece. It's got some kind of connector. It's not a, it's actually not a clasp. It just connects the two strands together and they're, it's kind of glued to the stones and the stones are on a, like, fishing line or wire. Um, they're not super cold, but they sure, they're either glass that's made to look like um, coral or their coral. Um, it's got that light sound, that light sound. Um, there are there are some hollow pieces I can see. Um, it's just very difficult to tell if it's just you know sort of extruded glass pieces. But it's about 36 inches long. It's huge. Um, let's see if we can kind of give you an idea of if I do it in halves. There we go. There's about the whole thing. So I'll have to experiment with that a little bit and um, maybe I can break, <laughs> break a piece off and see if it's glass if I cut myself. No, I wouldn't want to do that. But um, yeah, I'll have to see if I can figure if that's coral. I do have some real coral pieces. They're dyed. Um, they just, I don't know if this looks like them. I'll have to put them together side by side and see if they, they are similar. Here is 
another. I wonder if this all this stuff came from the same person. It's kind of in the same vein. This, I would say, is glass. Now, from the inside, it kind of looks like hollowed out bone. I don't know. What do you think? It's very shiny on the outside. I guess you could shellac bone after you've... Uh, um, after you've carved it and put some darkening on it. So this I'm not sure of. It's uh, again a hook and a ring clasp, some metal tone beads, lots of these similar weight and color and design beads and at the bottom three um, strands of beads. Uh, there we are. So I think these are pieces of bone. Um, I'll have to look at these little markings to see, you know, if they're those markings typical of bone. Um, uh, it's, you know, a reasonable weight for bone. I think, I suppose it could be glass, but don't want to break a piece just to figure that out. And the, yeah. Who knows? If you have any other... I know there's lots of ways of checking out bone. I'll just have to go back to my resources. My brain has sort of hit that fog level today and I can't remember everything I should. So an interesting piece. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Uh, uh, I might repurpose it to... These would be interesting in uh, like a... Not a wind chime. Uh, not a wind chime, but a... You know, one that uh, reflects the sun. Yeah, like a sun... <laughs> So you can't even remember what they're called. So there's a couple of odd little pieces of things lying down here. Here's something that's made out of, here's something that's causing damage or causing problems in the jar. It's made out of some kind of caps of something. And they're breaking. You can see there. Some kind of uh, seed caps that have been drilled. Some of them are dark, like black. Some of them are black, and then every little bit, there's a few. Um, obviously, enough have broken that there's big spaces on the. There's a huge one. So I wonder uh, what these, what kind of seed caps these are, and where they come from. Anybody know? Let, let me know in the comments. I'll. Uh, won't be using these for jewelry. And, oh, this is some kind of ceramic. Oh, nice pen patterned ceramic. Look at that. Nice designs pressed into the ceramic. And then I think the clay, like you can see the clay is chipped here, so it's actually black. Sorry, black clay all the way through. Uh, it's on uh, invisible cord or fishing line, some people call that. And then there's a f the rest of these are clay beads. Some of them are impressed. Some of them are just discs, um, long tubes. And there's a barrel clasp. So it would hang like this. And there's the rest of it. So interesting. I'm not sure what to do with that. That might be interesting repurposed into some costume thing, like part of a breastplate for a suit of armor. I had this idea that one day I would have enough junk jewelry collected that I would make a suit of armor out of jewelry. So, so take women's jewelry, which we use as, you know, decoration, but which also at times kind of, you know, is our way of armoring ourselves to deal with a social situation. Um, I would take the junk stuff and make it into a suit of armor. I probably have enough to make like half, enough bangles to make like a, up to my elbow for one arm. <laughs> but that's about it. So I don't know when I'll ever have enough. These are very pretty. Look at this pretty little clasp. Um, it's not a clasp. Oh, it is a clasp. She speaks and then... I don't know if I can get it out though. Oh, it presses somehow. 
Okay, so it's a pretty little flower clasp. And there's no markings. It's a little scratched up, but that's quite nice. And then these beads, they're, they're not, uh, they're on st um, like a silk cord that's coming untangled here. I think it's just that it's, it's woven down back through and has just needs to be trimmed again, but it feels silky to me. So that's quite nice. They're all like little carved flower beads, very white. Um, they're so identical. It, they could easily have come out of a mold of some kind. I suppose if I look closer, it kind of, well, may or may not be a mold around the center. There's kind of a, a line that goes all the way around. It's hard to tell. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I'd love to clean up the clasp a little bit, maybe paint it. So uh, it's too bad that the the green cord is visible on each side, but it's in good shape except for the fact that it's um, visible here, but that just needs to be trimmed. So I've never seen anything like this before. If you have any ideas about where it might have been made or sort of country of origin or style, let me know.